The Baylor Bears, of course, last year won the Big 12, uh, went 12-2 and two overall in the season, won the Sugar Bowl. Uh, the last time that they won the Sugar Bowl, apparently the United States had the best year in the history of the country. Uh, I don't know if any of you read that article, but it was very interesting. I think Chris and I talked about that back when, uh, back when we were doing this in January, I guess it was, sometime around there, after they won the, uh, the Sugar Bowl over Ole Miss. Post-game win expectancy for this bunch was not great. Obviously, they went 11-2 and two in the regular season. If you include the Big Ten, or excuse me, Big 12 title game, uh, their post-game win expectancy here, 8.55 and 3.45. So, 8.5 wins to 3.5 wins. They had some pretty unexpected wins last season uh, as far as stats go, right? Returning production, they're number 118 in the country. That's not good. 50% of their production is coming back, and the offense loses the most. Uh, they lost running back Abram Smith. They lose quarterback Jerry Bohannon. But the fun part about the Bohannon situation is, and we've talked about this on the show, I think it's pretty awesome that Aranda didn't hold out this competition until he got into the fall. He knew that he wanted Chapin to be the quarterback, and he let Bohannon transfer so that he can go be a starter somewhere else. Bohannon wanted to start. He let him out. So the offensive coordinator here, we'll start off with the offense. Uh, Jeff Grimes, the offensive coordinator, they were number 37 in offensive PPA per drive. They were incredibly efficient last year. Um, just kind of average. I mean, number 48 in rushing success rate, number 48 in passing success rate. They were number 42 in offensive explosive rate. Had a lot of people DM me uh, over the last couple of weeks about that explosive play rate. Uh, look at it this way. If you don't run a lot of plays, and yet you do have a lot of explosive plays, obviously your explosive play rate is going to be high. If you do run a lot of plays, your rate is not going to be that big because there's no way that every single play is going to be explosive, right? So the explosive play rate is just a, a different metric there. Um, looking at this bunch, you know, the Chapin beat him out, or beat out uh, uh, Bohannon in the spring. What is the offense going to look like without their top three rushers? Because Bohannon was one of those. They leaned on that running game a lot last year. The ratio was 61% to 39% rush to pass. Do they open it up more? Do they do they maybe change up what they've been doing? I'm curious. I would like to know exactly what they're going to what they're going to look like. Um the offensive line returns four players with 330 plus snaps, only one of five leading receivers returns and that's the tight end Sims. I got no idea what this offense is going to look like. They will be completely different than they were last year. And last year, we didn't really know what they were going to look like coming in because they went 2-7 and seven the year before. So they went from 2 wins to 12 wins. Now, I mean, the offense is obviously a key part of the ball game. <laughs> I mean, you can't, you can't win games if you can't score. So that's kind of an issue. Uh, they do have left tackle Connor Galvin. He's, they're going to lean on him quite a bit. I would imagine you're going to see a lot of runs over to that left side just based on him coming back. But, um, but yeah, I want to see what Shapin looks like. I, I want to see, obviously, we saw a little bit of him last year, but I want, to see, I want to see more of him with him being the starter, with him being the guy in an offense that is shaped around his talent. That's what I want to see. On defense, uh, number 29 in PPA per drive. They were number 8 in rushing success rate allowed, number 41 in passing success rate allowed. Uh, defense didn't have to run a lot of plays last year. And same thing with the offense, really. But uh, but they played a little more methodical because they ran the ball a lot, et cetera. Their defensive explosive play rate was number 116. Again, they did not run a lot of defensive plays, so anytime one of them went pretty long, it was different. Uh, they got seven starters back, including at all levels of the defense. We know that this is Aranda's defense, even though this is Ron Roberts as the defensive coordinator. It's Aranda's defense. They were number 90 in scoring opportunities in 2021 which means that uh, they were number 90 in other teams driving and getting a first down inside that 40-yard line. They were number 13 in points per scoring opportunity. So it was a bit of a bend-don't-break defense, just a touch. I would expect kind of the same thing. It, Aranda's defenses can be aggressive. They like to get turnovers. <laughs> they, they try to force uh, a lot here. Defense was really good at efficiency and success rate. Biggest weakness was the explosive play, uh, explosive plays allowed. You look at it, they were number 90 in 10-plus yard plays, as I was just talking about, number 73 in 20-plus yard plays. I, you know, I'm curious what... They're going to have to lean on this defense, much the same way that Oklahoma State did last year. 
is the defense strong enough for them to maybe suffer some growing pains on the offensive side of the ball? I still trust Jeff Grimes, and obviously I trust Aranda as a defensive coordinator. I just want to know what this team is going to look like. Did everything just gel perfectly last year, or was that just the beginning of what this team is going to look like going forward? Because they lost a ton, just a ton on offense. Uh, on defense, at number number 70 in returning production, eh, about average, 62% coming back. Uh, the keys to the season here, uh, find the identity on offense early. Uh, do they open it up more? Since, again, the ratio was 61 to 39 rush to pass. And then turnover margin. It was beautiful last year, number seven in the country. you got to try to maintain that, eliminate allowing so many explosive plays on defense. And they are projected favorites in six games. They've got seven toss-ups. Again, the toss-ups... Eight points or less uh, projected game there. Win total is seven and a half. It's juiced to the over at minus 150. I I look at this schedule. I've got a loss to BYU, a loss to Oklahoma State, a loss at Texas Tech, and a loss at Oklahoma. Uh, you know, I, I look at this and I wonder, is this, um, I don't know. I've got I've got something weird here. Uh, <laughs> no, I've got a loss at Texas. I typed that out wrong. Uh, so a loss at Texas, a loss at Oklahoma. I I have to wonder what this team will be. Uh, I think they can go eight and four, but it's so hard to figure out. Like, could, could they drop back down to just six wins? Yes. Could they come in with another nine or ten win season if Shapen's able to open up the offense? Yes. Like any any number of ranges is available here. I've got them at eight and four. Uh, again, win total seven and a half. They're plus six hundred, same as Oklahoma State to win the conference title. Eh, okay. Like I, I think I like what Baylor has turned into with Aranda, but again, we have two years. That's our sample size. And in his first year, they won two games. In his second year, they won twelve games. What's the difference? Right, let's split the difference here. Like, obviously, the hire of Jeff Grimes was huge. I want to see what they're going to look like this season before we make any long-term decisions on Dave Aranda. Right, that's what I would like to do. Thanks for listening to the Winning Cures Everything podcast. The website is winningcureseverything.com, and if you want to connect with us, we're on Twitter, at GaryWCE, at ChrisBGiannini, at Winning Cures, or you can email us, Gary at winningcureseverything.com, or Chris at winningcureseverything.com. Subscribe everywhere you need to subscribe, and we'll see you soon.